Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with a Monday expert, Mr. Rylas Dana. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Awesome, man. So I appreciate your time every week. You are a practicing attorney licensed in California and Arizona, a state probate, all of that great stuff. But today, we're actually going to talk about Rylas the investor. We're going to talk about, you know, uh, something that is actually in my course, how to get started one rental at a time. And that is the power of seller financing. You ready? Yeah, ready. So um, all, all my worlds kind of blend together. Yeah. So Rylas the investor learned everything from um, my day job. I'll stop talking in the third person. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, my day job. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry. That's uh, okay. Yeah. As a probate attorney and an estate planning attorney, what I enjoy most is just getting to meet lots of people and just um, talking to lots of people, lots of families, um, hearing all their um, uh, deepest secrets, how everything works. Right. Um, you know, on the way into this meeting, um, we got a client um, like cussing us out incoherently over the weekend. They got, oh, they nice. got some news that they're not... Um, the owner of the house like they think they are <laughs> and it, it, it was kind of expected um yeah but yeah so we, we uh i get to meet all types of people so i'm constantly um um i don't know just uh, learning that way mm -hmm. and then the, what i thought we'd talk about today is is seller financing mm -hmm. so this is something that's been on my radar you know one as an investor mm -hmm. and then but, but, but also as an attorney, I see people that, um, I, that, that I think are good candidates for it. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of break that down today. Like why would someone um, sell on seller financing? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I can give you kind of my opinion. Like most of my experience is as an attorney. So it'd be nice okay. to kind of bounce it off you as, as an investor, but. Yeah, that's awesome. So I think this would be a great conversation. And again, to kind of focus this, we're going to talk about why it's good for the seller. If we have time, we'll work into why is it good for the buyer. If you wanna look at other seller financing videos, just type in seller financing on my channel, you'll see lots of stuff. I've had CPAs break it down, I have all these other aspects. But yeah, Riley, well, as an attorney, you know, why do you think it's good for perhaps one of your clients to, to do seller financing? So here's, here's some scenarios I've seen from okay. a couple of different um, uh, clients and even uh, prospective clients, people who okay. I've uh, visited with. Uh, but they, they have rental properties and usually they want to get out of the rental game mm -hmm. for whatever reason, they, they don't want to be a landlord anymore. Mm -hmm. So I've, I had uh, one person recently who inherited a property and she was renting it for a while. You know, she had one of her kids actually living there while he was going to school and mm -hmm. renting out the rooms, Yep. but they're kind of done with that. And then I've had other clients as well, where they have rentals and they're just kind of, um, they don't want to do it anymore. So maybe like the tenants have moved out or the lease is about to end. And instead of turning it, you know, and getting a new tenant and cleaning it up, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're thinking about selling it. Yeah. Now, the, the reason I've pitched it or I've kind of brought it up is because of the tax implications. Mm -hmm. So if someone has a low basis. Mm -hmm. I, I think your audience knows what, what, what basis is, right? The, these these uh, listeners do. Mm -hmm. uh, if they sell it, they'll have a gain. Right. So if they sell it um, immediately, they, they realize that gain at once versus uh, seller financing, it becomes an installment sell. Yep. So that gain is broken down over a period of years. Correct. Correct. So, yeah. Um, um, it, it, that also came to my radar because one of these sellers, they were, you know, the, you know, they're renting it, done renting it, and they were trying to 1031 the proceeds. So oh. they're figuring out how they're going to, you know, 1031 the proceeds into another investment. So they were conscious of the, the tax implications of, of realizing the gain. And they were looking uh, for 1031. You're, up, you're a big proponent of that, that for book sure. in the background uh, kind of tells the story of that. Yep. yep. Um, if people don't know what 1031 is, I think that's a you know, it's yeah. great to read your story where you, where you break it, break it down. It was a great way to go from eight to 80 without paying the IRS. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So, uh, so 1031, I, I think that's a good way to go to more real estate, but mm -hmm. not necessarily the best way to cash out. Oh, for, yeah, you can't. Yeah. 
not 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 allowed you can't you can't take any of the boot as they call it right yeah so that so the idea you know as this um this lady was explaining to me how she was um um i guess she had questions about her 1031 she was going to 1031 into an apartment investment okay and again being a, a viewer of this channel i i uh, mentioned your show i said you know watch his channel like he's he's talking about people like you that are potentially getting into bad deals right now yeah wow going into an apartment today talk about talk about paying full price yeah so i was again this is like my my lawyer hat on but i'm like hey just just be careful like you know what you're getting into and mm -hmm. you'll look really close at the assumptions that they're making right yeah so yeah and then that's where it kind of led me to instead of 1030 wanting to save taxes like why don't you consider this other option as yeah. a way to save taxes yeah it's fine i think seller financing for the sellers or your clients there's really four reasons for it and as an investor or somebody looking to purchase or sign a deal on seller financing you have to ask questions and more importantly, listen. It's great. All you need is one of the following four things to be true. If you can get two of the four, it's an easy yes answer. So from my opinion, you've hit most of them. So absolutely number one uh, in my experience is uh, they wanna be done, right? Uh, maybe they are the person that built a portfolio and they're 70 or 80 years old and they just don't have the time and energy they want out or it's transition. It's so often transition to the next generation. My dad and mom built it. It was their thing. It's not my thing. I live on a different coast. This is a headache for me. I want out. Okay. Uh, so yes, there is some kind of, they don't want to be a landlord anymore. Number one, number two, if they understand taxes and if they, they have the ilk of, I already pay too much, damn the IRS, damn the, you know, whatever, if you can get them to understand, uh, not only do you have depreciation recapture, but if you do, if you sell it and recognize it in one year, it's a it's a huge number. Uh, I worked with Bob Langworthy, who's the CPA, and yes, the content is on my channel. Um, it's about fifty percent for some people, right? Even if it's capital gains and then depreciation recapture and state level, it's it can get pretty expensive. Um, number three, income. They have relied on cash flow to fund their life. So maybe they're 60 or 70 years old. Uh, they've been making 10 grand a month, but they don't want to be a landlord, but they don't, they need income. Create a note, have interest, be the bank. And then here's number four that not a lot of people talk about, but I've actually seen be very common. Number four, Rylas, a big lump of cash is a problem. For lots of people, a big wave of cash, you know, you sell a duplex, you get 200 grand. It's not a good day. That's stressful. What am I going to do with it? Uh, how do I invest it? Are my kids going to come after it? Do I have to do this or that? Cat, a wave of cash for some people is a frightening problem, especially in an environment with no interest. You're not going to make anything. You're going to make 0.01 in a savings account. So really there are four reasons. So as a buyer, you need to listen for those four things or ask questions. Uh, are they frustrated? Uh, do they want to reduce taxes? Uh, do they want to maintain income? And then the fourth one, again, that not a lot of people talk about is cash going to be a problem. And that's a great question. What would you do with $200,000? What would you do with $350,000? Most people would be like, so I've actually done a lot of deals because I've said, hey, instead of taking 200 grand today, why don't we do a 7% loan? Because you know that's going to be 700% or 7,000% higher than you're going to get in a bank. You're going to have a note on the building. So if I don't pay you, you just take it back. I mean, seller financing um, is a lot more powerful than people think. And I think it's a great option. And again, really where I think this breaks down is a lot of real estate agents think they don't get paid if the seller does seller financing, which is just not true. Sellers or agents can get paid. I think more agents, more real estate agents and real estate brokers should think about it as an option for their clients. So that's kind of my. Yeah. I, I love that last one. I love how you put that last one where a lump of cash is a problem Yeah, because that's, um, 
Um, I, so I guess people are more stressed about it, right? Like there's yeah, kind of amazing. like there, there, there's two sides of it, but they're seeing um, more of the um, yeah the, the stress. How am I going to reinvest it? You know, yeah. are my kids going to be bugging me for it? I, or, I've had that exact conversation. I remember the last deal I did, fourteen units over a million bucks, seller financing. Um, he actually told me, uh, you know, if I if I walk away from this with I don't know, pick a number, eight hundred grand after taxes. My kids are we're never going to stop calling, and I don't I don't want that, and um, you know that's why we structure a note so he makes like five grand a month or something like that so he can still survive, and then if you know when he when he you know when life takes him to the other side, then the kids can sell the note or whatever they want, uh, he, he'll be fine with that. But yeah, he did he really did I mean he he went on for like a half hour about how his I think he had three kids if I remember right, just talking about how they would just everybody would want it. They'd play favorites. It was, it was clearly stressful. A lump of cash would be a problem. Yeah, that, that's a great point. So now as an estate planning attorney, what I recommend is just hold the note in your trust. Yeah. So that, that's what I show people where, you know, right now your trust owns this house, which is an asset mm -hmm. and an investment. So instead you become the bank. So your trust now owns a note where you own the, the right to get paid. Yeah. And you're secured by that house, that actual house. I think that's more security mm -hmm. than trying to underwrite some apartment deal. With, no, without question. It's an asset you know, you have experience. You were the last owner. You know what's done, what's not done. It's your deal. There's just a lot more security there. And you're so right. People don't understand, right? A seller sells a property. They're getting rid of one asset. They're exchanging that asset for some cash, right? 10%, 20%, something. And a note, that physical note has value. People don't get that. It's not just a piece of paper. It's a note that is, if you're doing it right, secured against the asset, which, you know, you close on this deal, Rylas, let's just say it's 500 grand. If they want it, they could sell the note tomorrow. Even if the note's 30 years, they're not going to get 500 grand. It'll be some kind of discounted cash flow, but they can sell it. That, that note has worth, correct? Correct. Correct. So I, I think it's a great option. So something that I'm, I enjoy talking to uh, my clients about, and then I've been calling uh, real estate agents as well on these old listings. Uh, I did get a call back from one of those, um, you know, their, their deals falling apart. There you so go. They, they think their deals uh, dying and um, they want a backup. Yeah. They, yeah. They want a backup. So what I told the agent was, was, um, you know, what's going to help the seller. You know, I'm trying to get down to these, few, these four things. These are, these are great, but, um, I was asking, yeah, what are they going to do with the money? What are they looking for? Like, what, exactly. what, what are they trying to get to? Yes. Yeah. And real estate agents, again, I want to, I want to hit this again. A lot of, some of you get it and some of you know, it's a, it's a tool in your toolbox. Some of you need to add this tool, understanding why seller financing is great for your clients. Ask them. Just ask them, you are there, you, they signed a contract with you, a purchase and sale agreement or a listing agreement. Ask them, what, what do you plan to do with this money? You're going to sell this one that your kid was renting, a house hacking while in college. Now they're gone. Now you're, what are you going to do with it? What if you maintain some income? What if you reduce your taxes? For, again, I can't tell you that fourth one is often missed. What, is cash a problem? And uh, for lots of people, it is. So uh, great advice. Real estate agents, uh, search my channel. If you're in my courses, all kinds of accounting and all of that, how you can break it down and do some estimates. So any other thoughts on this, Rylas? Uh, I just think it's, I think we're going to be hearing more of it, seeing more of it in 2022, you, oh, know, totally as, um, you know, all these loans that just got refinanced and as people um, are, are starting to realize these benefits, you yeah. know, starting to realize the tax benefits of it. I totally agree. I think 2022 continues the real estate slowdown that I've been talking about for the last six months. Real estate slowdown means more days on market, more price drops. You get to find the motivated sellers. And sometimes the motivated sellers, they don't have equity, or maybe they just will take a different option instead of just cash. So Rylas, thank you very much for doing this. If somebody wants to get your service in California or Arizona, how should they reach out? Uh, best way is rylasdana.com. So that links to all my websites. My Instagram's also rylasdana. So you, you can find me there. Very cool, buddy. I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day. All right, thank you. You got it.